I'ma do it real big, real big, real big. I know what my real niggas feel is. Like to another episode of the Course I Take Over podcast. I'm sitting here, man. I was supposed to been high this guy on, oh, man. <laughs> He always traveling overseas. Um, it's crazy. I literally got his number saved in my phone under Bucket. <laughs> One of the best players I've ever seen play, really. Uh, my cousin Cardo, man, what's going what's on, going boss? Good, good, man, long good. time no see. Man, long time. So what, what's going on, man? You back in the city? I, yeah, I heard I'm back in, been going. Keep me up. Update. I'm back in America playing now. Uh, Cincinnati just got a professional basketball team called okay. the uh, Cincinnati Warriors. So I've been playing for them. We had... Like three games, four games now. We just had our first two home games this past weekend, so okay. now I'm in America playing. So where y'all playing at? Uh, we play at Course with Sports. Okay. That's where our last games were. Now we're about to move to a different uh, gym because it wasn't enough uh, seating for the players. I mean, for the stands. So let's talk about the journey, man. I remember, like to be honest, my first time seeing you play was at Lachlan. Right. So let's talk about the journey. What got you into basketball and where you decide to play? And um, like what made you like decide to play? Man, what got me into it, man? My my brother, John, I used to always see my brother playing and, and I mean it just made me want to hoop for real. Like so since then I was always in the gym. I mean in the gym, dribbling outside. Yeah. You know, I didn't really, I didn't start playing like organized basketball until like what, the seventh grade, I think. But I would always be outside playing with older dudes. I'd be always outside dribbling, right hand, left hand, everywhere I went to the park, I got the ball. Right. Um. But yeah, that was that was the main main thing how I really got started. Now that time, from you say the first time you playing was in the seventh grade. Mm -hmm. So why Lachlan? Did you realize? Did you not realize the the talent you had? Okay, now Lachlan ain't gonna give me the exposure I need. So now I'm a trend. Why Lachlan? I for real I went to Lachlan because that was the area that we had lived, we had moved to. You know what I'm saying? So when we moved to that area, I just I just was going to that school. It was you know what I mean. <laughs> so it was like wherever I was at, I, I'm a firm believer like. At some point, they're going to have to see me. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. I'm going to try to put these numbers up. Whatever school we play, I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to do so they're going to know, like, whoever he play against, he can do it against every level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Something, too. When back then, it wasn't a lot of moving like it is now because yeah, yeah. now players move a lot, players team up a lot. Like, how these players end up on yeah. even in high school? Yeah. It didn't trickle down to the high school scene. So back then, it wasn't popular. Until you start seeing it a lot, really, when towards your senior year, you end up going to withdraw. Yeah. That's really when it started becoming prevalent. That's yeah. really when you start seeing it a lot. Yeah, and oh, the reason why I went to withdraw was because of the reason you said. They was like, oh, he doing that at Lachlan. He ain't going to be able to do it at withdraw and this mm -hmm. and that. So I left. Ended up averaging more at withdraw than I did at Lachlan. So it's like, after that, it kind of put people in perspective. But I also had went to like this top 100 Ohio camp. Mm. We had Jared Sudger, Trey Burke, all them. It was, called, it was called the IPS Top 100. It was at uh, Welsh College in Cleveland, mm. I think. Yeah, it was in Cleveland. Like I ended up being like the second top performer under Jared Sudger. So, bro. like I said, it was people like Trey Burke, said, all these these high level names. You get what I mean? Yeah. So once that put everything in perspective. It was like, hold on, he really a real deal. Yeah, he like that. Like <laughs> now, 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 let's get back to your John. Most people, um, let's get back to your brother John. Most people don't know the story. I read a story not too long ago, maybe like a year or so ago. He beat LeBron James in the game. Now, was you at that game and how did that game go? And like, nah. just, just get some insight about. Now, I mean, you of course you were at that, <laughs> but let's get some insight about it. Have you ever talked to you about it? Just how was that game? Just give us more insight on it. Yeah. So. My brother, when he uh, played against LeBron, he went to George Junior Republic, a prep school. It was a big time prep school as well, just just like LeBron in them school. But you know, LeBron them had the buzz. Um, my brother was a freshman. I think LeBron was like a junior, junior, senior. It was whatever year he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Damn. Yeah, but like my brother, he he don't care. He just came into it like it was a regular <laughs> situation. He told me. He said, "Bro." Come on, man. You already know like what I'm gonna do. Like that's all he can say. I'm like, oh. So I'm at home. I'm my mama. She went to the game. 
I was at home watching my little sisters, but I wanted to be at the game. Yeah. It was it was jumping too. <laughs> I, was, I was like, dang, but yeah, bro just said it was a regular game for him. He already knew what he was gonna do. Like he he just seen at that point when they in that same realm, bro was like LeBron was a, a regular person. He don't care who he was. Like, yeah. And they said it, it showed, like when they played, and they beat them, but yeah, they never, crazy. they never put that on LeBron. Um, um, love. Yeah, they don't, they don't, they don't show stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they, they ain't they show that. Show I still got the game at the house. That like, real though. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. how old, old it is on VHS. So <laughs> you know it's old. It's old yeah. yeah, like. <laughs> yeah. So um, the Withrow run, and now, now it's time to um pick that college. Now t tell us, tell us something, cause you, you're not the biggest. You probably one of the best players I ever seen, but you're not one of the biggest players I ever mm -hmm. seen. Most people see you out there like, man, what? You so quick, you <laughs> fast, you can shoot, you jump out the gym. Now let's talk about the politics of really going to, because right. people don't know that it's really politics in this game. They really want the biggest, the strongest, the mm -hmm. toughest, not knowing it's really guys out here that really can outplay these guys. Right. Now let's speak on the politics of the, just really the game in general of knowing, I know I'm one of the best players in my area. I'm one of the best players in my state. But the politics are going against me. Mm -hmm. So let's let's speak on making that next step. And what's the politics that kids might not know that when you go to college? Um, the politics of when you go to college, it really is about like which school you pick to go to. It's important. Like that's the main thing. Knowing the coaches, knowing the staff, knowing everything because you can be the best player at a different school and. You go to another school and you might not flourish. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Like you can average twenty here and eight assists. You can go to this school and you can average ten and three. Right. And they like, dang, what happened? But it's about the coach and how comfortable you are. What the coach lets you do. If the coach really wants you to do it, because they might be selfish. Like you never know. Every mm -hmm. coach has their own agenda. So. Right. I think that's a big thing of really understanding the coaching that you're going to and the school that you're going to. Don't just make a decision because it's where you is what you wanted to do, it's where you wanted to be. Now let's um just curious, um, this is a little off topic. What keeps you still playing today? Like what drives you? Just me, myself, like my family. I'm to be honest, like I'm just so happy and grateful that I can play in the States. Mm -hmm. Like, my family haven't really seen me play in person since high school. Dang. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, nobody in my family really seen me play in person besides Devereaux's League and yeah, stuff like Smith. That. Yeah, like that. But I'm saying, like, real, get focused and play for real with fans and everything, every game. In a pro setting, they never seen it until this past weekend. You know, where I had 40. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up to some of them games, too, for sure. Yeah, that, for sure, that, for sure. And now, um, how do y'all plan on growing that league? Um, Well, the league is actually big, but the Cincinnati team, Oh, okay. yeah, the league is actually, so, you know, it's like three major pro leagues in America, which yeah. is the NBA, the G League, and the TBL, which is that. called the Basketball League. That's the league that I'm in right yeah. now. Damn. So... The league has 44 teams. It's a big league. Mm -hmm. They Last year, 190 people went overseas. They had 15 people. Is this something the like the NBL? The NBL, yeah, the NBL, yeah. yeah, that's in uh, Canada, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, they kind of like partnered, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's a big time, real deal league. So this, oh, so this could be a whole other opportunity for a lot of other players. Yes, it is. It's, it could. It's a very... Good opportunity for other players. A very good opportunity to give people that chance that they might not have been able to show or they might not have been able to how to film to do something that they wanted to do. This gives you that outlet because every game is streamed. You know, they're doing everything professionally. Right. I don't, um, I don't interview every time I every time I interview players that play overseas. I don't ask Kashmir, I don't ask AT, I don't ask Amaj. J. What is the craziest thing you're gonna see him playing over there? Cause it's not like the uh, states. So what what like what's over there? Like man, look, they gotta get me back home, bro. Man, <laughs> the smoking cigarettes in the gym. What? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like where I was at, bro. What? They they smoke everywhere. Like For it's real? crazy to me. I just. <laughs> In China, man, they smoke cigarettes everywhere, bro. Like, I just, 
they didn't understand that I used to be like, what's going on? Like, it, it was crazy, man. That, that was a, one of the craziest. It was a, let me see. Yeah, that was that was probably that was probably the biggest thing to where I was like, like we hoop and they just smoking. Man, crazy. Like, <laughs> the food was different. Like in different cities, you know, it's different things. Like they tried to give me like a live squid like, or octopus or something. I don't know what it was. I was I said, <laughs> I'm cool. Y'all tripping. Give me a burger, bro. Yeah, like I'm cool on all that. <laughs> get, my, get my chef in here. I'm a. Get it right, like that one. <laughs> nah, that's yeah. crazy. Uh, Cincinnati, man, we, we we see you at a lot of games. Everybody, that's why I said, um, but when we introduce you, familiar face, you always in the gym. Mm -hmm. Who's some of your favorite players to watch in the city today? Um, dang man, I like the little guard from Taft, left hand guard. Uh, Makai Elmore. Makai, yeah, him. I like I like Paul. Paul's really good at um knowing the game. I, I feel like his 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 mind is above other players here in the city, so it, it makes the game a lot slower for him. It makes it easier for him to you know get busy. Um, I like I like Rayvon. Mm -hmm. We we actually went to Taft and scrimmaged him. I always go up to Taft and scrimmage their team. Mm -hmm. So Rayvon, he I could tell he been putting in work. Like his shot mm -hmm. is a lot better than what people think. Like and we were playing, we were playing them. So he's playing against somebody that's six, seven, six, eight, two that can move just like he does, yeah. and he's pulling up smooth just like he not there. I'm like, I, I was impressed. I was impressed. I was impressed with Rayvon. With Rayvon is now uh, back to Paul. Paul is a lot of teams in the city. What make Paul so different? A lot of teams in the city don't have point guards. I always say that. Yeah. It's. You don't see your traditional point guard nowadays. A lot of people have scoring guards. Right. Paul, the type of player that's going to get the ball, get out my way, you go over here, you go over here, and then I'm going to run the show. Yeah. yeah. With Rayvon, I think he give you – He, I think he play every game like he's starving. Yeah. Like, bro, we got to get out of here. I'm hungry. And that's yeah. the difference with him. Yeah. Like, yeah, he going to sure. keep developing. That's why he's so he athletic, so, yeah. so hungry, still growing. Right. So. He just played every game like he hungry. Like, bro, I ain't had nothing to eat today, bro. I'm about to take whatever on your plate. Like, yeah, that's yeah. what makes him so different. When he dunk, he trying to take off the rim. Like, Facts. He, he go hard. Yeah, he I, nice. I like Rayvon. Uh, the the kid from Hughes. Um, the little guard. Number zero. The buff one. Jay, I call him a pit bull. Jay Sean yeah, Martin. Jay Sean. Yeah, he I, a pit. I, yeah, that's my boy. Yeah, he a Jay pit. Jay Sean, that's my. He, I, one thing about him, he always... He used to hit me up because I gave him my – he used to hit me up like, I'm trying to get in the gym with you. I'd be like, man, I'm out of town. He'd be like, man, when you coming back, let me know. I'm in there. I want to be in there with you every day. He's really trying to work. I'd be like, all right, he really hitting me up. Yeah. Like, man, I'm hitting you up. Really I'm going to hit you. I'm like, all right. He's somebody else. He's super bouncy, too, to be yeah, with he's, he's somebody yeah, else. I've seen sure. super bouncy. It's a, it's a lot of stuff I could teach him because I can relate to him mm -hmm. as far as, like, our size, you know, the moves we do. Like, I could – Make him make the game a lot more easier for him as well. He might need it. That's my guy. Yeah, he yeah, might need that's it. My boy. One of my one of my favorite players. Yeah. Um, like the Cincinnati basketball scene in general. How do you think that it's changed from back when you was just playing in the city, like you say, till now? Because I think kind of like Cincinnati basketball is kind of like I think. It's starting to trickle down from the NBA. A lot of stuff you see in the NBA, you starting to see in college. A lot of stuff yeah. you see in college, starting to see in the um, high school level. As far as the shooting, mm -hmm. a lot of kids starting to pull up now from like the volleyball line. As far as the um, <laughs> basketball going position list. Yeah. So how do you think that it's changed from when you was playing till now? Um, when I was playing, it was a lot more physical. I would say, like you know, the refs they let a lot more go. Now, even when I was in college, like my last year, they would they would call a foul if you was hand checking too much. Mm -hmm. Like you couldn't hand check as much if from somebody like me that's big because I'm fast. So if you really can't hand check me, it's kind of like I could do what I want. You can't guard me. Yeah, <laughs> like it, it's tough. You know what yeah. I mean? It, it makes it a lot harder. But that's how it is at the pro level. Usually. If you keep fouling somebody, that's why it's able people are able to score at a high clip in the NBA because you really can't do and touch people how you want to. You can touch them in without the ball in certain situations, but like as soon as they get the ball, they have to protect the shooter. Mm -hmm. So now 
Anytime you hit my wrist, if I'm shooting or hit anything that alters my shot, it's a foul right away. Knock me out my corner, it's a foul right away. So that creates more free throws, more opportunities, more leeway. Because if I if I go and I do this, and it releases the defender now because he's scared he just had two fouls. Mm -hmm. Now I can pull up, you know, just I think that's that's one of the biggest things, uh, just the how physical it is. The media. The media as well, um, I think it's a lot more, it's just a lot more outlets now for people to be seen. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter what school you go to now because everything is Definitely. on the internet. So on it's like, yeah. Even when, I was I, even when I was playing, I wasn't, you know, since I lost my sight, I used to be good. Yeah. <laughs> but since I lost Dang. my sight, I wasn't you or nothing. So... I was thinking, even when I was playing not too long, I've been out of school 10 years now. Right. But when I was playing, we didn't even have stuff like this. It wasn't I no know. podcast. It wasn't nobody trying to talk. It wasn't that's no. Crazy. But that's crazy how the media outlet is. Mm -hmm. You probably wouldn't have left Lachlan if the media was like this. because no Like, they yeah. gonna see me while I'm here. So, the kids always got a camera in their face. Yeah. It could be, I don't care if you go to Gamble, you could go to CCPA, you could yeah. go. It's a camera. If you good, they gonna see you. Mm -hmm. It's like the same thing with like, for example, Mikey Williams. He played. He played for his high school, his league team. But right. you still, he got a million followers on Instagram. People still following him. Cameras still following him. Puma. Little stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just different nowadays with the media. I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. So um, what's your relationship like? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask that later. What's the difference between? Okay, so you don't play with a lot of you don't play with pros on it. You don't play with people in the NBA. You don't mm -hmm. play with people that didn't make it. You don't play with you don't play with D1 players. How many? What's the difference you think? And playing versus these guys that's in the league versus a regular guy. Because uh, right. when I was talking to Corey Long that went to Hughes, he he was at D1 transferred to a D2. He said the biggest difference from him is length and bigs. Mm -hmm. So what do you think the difference is from playing some of these guys that's, that you know that made it and could have made it yeah. versus playing for, some, for, for example, some of the guys that you may see overseas or some of the guys you play with in college that really didn't make it? Right. Uh, I would say I don't really think about length because uh, I don't think – I mean that's that's a big one. They are it is a difference, but like the consistency, like just being able to do every the same stuff right over and over and over again. You get what I'm saying? Like being able to make that shot if I'm open every time. Being able to set that screen and roll, or being able to set that screen and pop, knowing what I'm supposed to do immediately. You get them like it's right. it's that one tenth of a second, two tenths of a second that matter that at the at the next level they're doing with no question. Like I know if I got it from the top of the key and I pass it to the wing and he has a somebody fronting him, I pass it back to the top of the key and then I got the overhead because it's no help side. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like that stuff that that's automatically supposed to happen. So it's it's just certain things mentally that make the game a lot easier and more fluid at, at a higher level. It makes it more consistent. Okay, so we're getting good now because you break it down plays, you're talking yeah. about coverages and zones. Yeah. Okay, we're getting good. We're getting good. So as a small guard, most people most people will look at you and say, how can we use him? Mm -hmm. What do you think some of your best skills are? Um, I would say my best skills are knowing – that I can, knowing that I'm a playmaker first. First, I try to get my teammates involved, you know, run the show. I can control the tempo of the game very well. I know the ins and outs of just defenses and things like that. Like, I know when to sprint and take out to get a layup. As soon as I catch the ball, I can tell if I can go get a layup already. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? So, like, I, I'm just good at decision making, making the right plays, reading, because everything is a read to me in basketball. If I feel like I got two people on me, I'm going to kick it. I'm going to make the game simple. Mm -hmm. If I feel like I got a one-on-one -on -one match, I'm going to go get the one-on-one -on -one match. Like I'm going to always try to make the best play possible during that time. Hey, everybody that's listening to this, players, let me stop y'all. In my opinion, he can shoot the hell out of the ball. He didn't say nothing about scoring. He didn't say nothing about scoring. Being a point guard, a lot of point guards want to score 30, want to score 20. He said he ain't say nothing about scoring. 
So you can it, it, being a guard, being size, you can affect the game way more than just trying to score the ball. Like for real. So what's some of your relationship like with some of the other players in the city? Some of the other former players? Um, I mean I have a good relationship with mostly every every former player in the in the city, to be honest, because you know, it's, it's like a, a respect type of thing. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows who putting in the work. Everybody knows who who trying to do the right thing. So when when you doing that, you happy for everybody. Mm -hmm. You you gonna have a great connection with them. It's no like envy. It's no competition. It's we all here. We doing this now. What else can we do to better our city and put our city on? Definitely. Definitely. If if you had a chance to play with, uh, if you had a chance to play with any player in the city, who would it be? Um, that you haven't got a chance to play with yet. Let me see. Man, it'd be. See, me personally, I need a big. Mm -hmm. So, dang man, probably. I would have liked to play with Yancey for real. Mm, that would have been. That would have yeah, been cool. Yeah. I would have liked to play with Yancey. Because, like I said, he knows the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like he he makes it he makes it easy. Like we didn't play in open gyms and stuff, but like a real game setting, I think like I would have flourished off of him and he would flourish off of me. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, it's just that pick and roll would have been nasty. <laughs> pick and roll would have been nice because he could pop and he could roll. Yeah. So it's like that. That's what you want as a guard. Yeah. Somebody who can pop and roll. Is it makes it tough for the defense because they always gotta respect the role. Yeah. They always gotta so when they when he rolling, now they gotta help. Now I'm automatically gonna kick it to the left wing. Yeah. If I'm on that side, coming off going that way, like Nah, for real. That's dope, that's yeah. dope. It's time for our takeover segment of the day. We're gonna ask you a couple questions. You can answer them as honest as you can, the best of your ability. This is where we have a little fun. Mm -hmm. Narrow your principles down into three words. Mm. Discipline. Mm. Work. This just on on a basketball court. It could be anything. Mm. It could be life. Discipline. Mm. Loyalty. Mm. I said work, but going on. I mean, we always got to work. Discipline, loyalty. I don't even know the third one, man. That's tough. Question. I say, if I, I say sacrifice. Sacrifice for sure. You're, you're sacrifice That's a life, good bro. one, bro. You're That's a good one. You're gonna sacrifice a lot. You've been, you been away from your family. You've been out the country. You've been. You know, sacrifice a lot. Dang, bro. That's the word too. Sacrifice. Show that's one. But, um, that's right, because I just know you. Yeah, but, fact, <laughs> fact. Um, fact. best best muscle to play in, in your opinion. Um, recently for me, it has been the Giannis ones, mm, the okay. very first Giannis's that came out. Okay. Those for me recently, those those have been nice. I just bought some Kyrie's. They new, so I'm kind of breaking them in. So I really don't know. But the Giannis is comfortable grip. Yeah, hey, I man. like them, yeah. You going to the blacktop. You get to take five people, not including yourself. Who you take? It could be your boys from the hood, it could be NBA <laughs> players, it could be college players, dudes, anybody. You going yeah. to the blacktop, including yourself, you taking five people. Who you including take? me? Including all right. you. You all the point right. guard. All right, me, my brother John Brown, my brother Ron Bracey, um, who else, man? I'm going to say... I'm going to say Kobe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, my boy. I got to go with Kobe. Maybe right. And I need Shaq. Ooh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Okay. We coming through. That's a wrap. Yeah, that's a wrap. Yeah, <laughs> we coming through. Now we doing five dinner guests. Dead five or alive. dinner guests? Dead or alive. Five dinner guests? Yeah. Who you taking to eat with you? Who I, who I need to... We talking business in these uh meetings or just people who I'm just taking to eat. I'm gonna say we talking business, business and culture. Business and culture, cause I like to pick people brain. I'm gonna go with Bill Gates. That's a good one. <laughs> I think you gonna say it. 
Mark Allen. I mean, hold on. Yeah. Yeah, that's his name. Paul Allen, my bad. Paul, Paul Allen. Allen. Uh, owner of the Seahawks. Yeah. 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 Paul Allen. Um. Let me see. Who else? I say. Jay Z. Hmm. That's a good one. Yeah. Um. Well, that's three. Allen Iverson. AI. Yeah, AI. Uh, um, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> oh, you gotta, you gotta have yeah. Jeff. I was about to say Jeff or Elon. Yeah, you gotta back, depend both of them. Back, back, <laughs> depend yeah. both of them, bro. If you weren't playing basketball, what would you be doing? Um, Training. <laughs> yeah. yeah, people, everybody keep asking me to train and. Cause they see your skill level, yeah. like you dribbling and everything. How did like teach something like pass on the game? But hey, I'm still playing. I ain't done yet. Yeah, right, right. I ain't they, done they, yet. They want me to just hop in there and start training. But I'm like, man, I'm train. I'm so busy training myself. Yeah. And the way I, the way I train and I'm in tune with my training. Right. It's almost like a workout for me again. <laughs> I will be doing a thousand workouts a day. Right. Cause I, I really get into when I'm training. Like so. The time is coming, so probably after this season, after this TBL season, I'm gonna start my training company, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give give back and show uh-huh. everybody what what how to get there. Yeah, branded, branded, because it yeah. was um somebody who the hell was somebody I follow on Instagram. He lethal shooter. Yeah, he took his shit and just ran with it. He hey. got a whole. I'm like, who like whole little thing? Yeah, so man, if you do it, bro, take it and run with it, bro. Mm-hmm. Take it and run with it. Um, last but not least, who should who should we have on the podcast next? And if you know him, you should plug him. Um, I don't, who I I don't know who all y'all. Uh, you could name. We probably ain't, we had cat like people you might know. We had yeah. Cashmere, right? At Samaj. We had Coach Paul. We had. Yeah. We had Corey Albertson. We had a couple different people. We uh, we had probably every coach in the C-Mac, literally. A um, right. couple coaches outside. Um, this is the third season, so we still growing. So you can yeah, probably name somebody. Yeah. Um, basketball side from the city. It didn't even got to be from the city. We do Zooms. Oh. It could be anybody. You can be like, hey, man, he'll do this. Yeah. Um, y'all, did, y'all did Jordan Crawford? No, we got we had to get Jordan yeah, Crawford, bro. so that'll be a good one. Get Jordan on there, cause he he didn't play a lot of places. He didn't seen a lot of stuff. He know the game. Like that'd be a good one. Okay. Um, y'all got Samaje on. Y'all yeah, have him at eighteen. I got a oh, Jordan yeah, got, with him oh, at eighteen. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, 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 yeah okay, yeah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. It ain't came uh, out yet, but it's. I got my other boy. He overseas in the Euro League. Shaquille McKissick. Shaquille McKissick. Yeah, okay, I, we got to talk about that one off camera. We got to talk yeah, about that off yeah. camera. Yeah, yeah. He he in the Euro League right now. That's he was he we we lived together at our junior college. Mm. So yeah, it was like me and him. We was I was the one. He was the two three. You know what I'm saying? Like we we went we went hard. Like <laughs> that's okay. one that you should get on here. Um. Yeah, them, them, them three, them would be cool. Them ones I'm going for, for sure. Yeah. Well, it's the Courtside Takeover Podcast. Appreciate yeah, you for coming, man. champ. It, and we out. Yeah. <laughs>